Okay. All right, Mark. So, hey, man, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, You you know, thanks again. Like I said, we talked earlier. Thanks for taking the time today. Um, I'm really excited to get into, you know, your story, your background, your business with Fabulingua, and just how you're, you know, changing the world, improving, you know, with children, children's education. Um, And really, the first thing I wanted to ask you for the audience and people listening is, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I know you kind of gave me a little bit of background on you. Feel free to re- reiterate that, um, but a little bit of background on you and uh, where how you got started in this whole journey. Sure, sure. So, um, you know, right now uh, I'm uh, we're, we're doing this from Austin, Texas, which is where uh, I'm based, my family's based. Uh, most of the company is as well. Um, I'm originally from Dallas, but uh, I uh, sort of left, um, you know, at the end of my teens, uh, lived in the Northeast, uh, went to school um, uh, in in the Northeast, then worked on Wall Street um, for a little bit. That took me to London. I was there for five or six years working in finance and just wanted to, to do something different. I wanted to build companies and, instead of... Um, uh, sticking with a finance career. So um, looking for opportunities, found one within my colleagues and also some uh, local developers, uh, software engineers. Uh, and interestingly enough, uh, this opportunity was in Shanghai, China. So sort of packed my bags um, and moved to, to Shanghai and started a, essentially what was one of the first mobile application platforms in China. So we essentially sort of brought, I guess, you know, the mobile internet or apps to China, one of the sort of pioneers in that space. When um, was this, Mark? When, so when did this happen? Uh, the early 2000s. Yeah, Whoa. early 2000s. Um, yeah, a while back. Um, we Amazing. sort of right around the time, just before the iPhone uh, was released, believe it or not. Um, and so, uh, yeah, crazy run there. Um, when I got there, there were 29 million mobile phone users. And when I left, there were 600 million. So you can imagine sort of the growth that was happening there. And we, um, we certainly were... The beneficiaries of that, um, and that took that company public um, on the Nasdaq. So I was the CFO of that company. Amazing experience, learned so much. Um, and uh, from there on, I when I sort of I continued to circumnavigate the globe, came back to uh, the West Coast for a little bit, and then back to Texas. And in Texas, I got into renewable energy. That was a really interesting time for wind and solar. Um, a lot of big power plants being developed. I love renewable energy. I'm fascinated by sort of climate um, technology and science um, as kind of a hobby. Uh, and that was fun. Um, and then this opportunity came back to get back into software. And this is uh, really the, um, this is my 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 co-founder uh, and my wife, uh, Leslie Omanya's um, creation. And she uh, has a background in linguistics, um, social anthropology, psychology. She wanted to teach our children um, Spanish. Um, she grew up in Spain, had a Venezuelan uh, father, uh, Norwegian mother, always surrounded by languages. Languages were a big part of, of her life, opened many, many doors for her, and she wanted the same thing for our children. And so that is how uh, Fabulingua came to be. She, she was this sort of looking for ways to support um, our kids in learning Spanish. Couldn't find anything that was she, what she called sort of token, um, really was just a bunch of vocabulary lists uh, that children were supposed to learn, learn your colors, learn your numbers, learn your farm animals, um, and then somehow you're supposed to stitch those together and learn a language. She was like, that's not how you said it. She developed her own method um, through children's stories um, and ultimately got a patent on this method because it was quite innovative. And that's the uh, the dawn of Fabulingua. And we've been working on that now for about three years um, and are uh, really helping teachers um, but I'll stop there and let you ask sort of a next yeah, question. Yeah, no, I love that. I really love that. Um, so I, when I think about the the education space and particularly the children's education space and languages, uh, it's not really well done today, right? Like mm-hmm. traditional education system, it's, it's like I know this because like I told you earlier, I'm half Colombian and I never – had the opportunity to really learn Spanish besides school. So when I was in school for four years, I took Spanish. But when I was in Colombia for a week or visiting South America for a week, I learned more just by being exposed to people and surroundings and characters and stories 
right? Because it's so immersive, right? Because the you're not going to learn from pen and paper and books, right? Necessarily, you're going to learn much faster through different experiences. So tell me about, you know, when you were in the beginning stages of building this, uh, building Fabulingua, what was the driving factor for, I think you mentioned your kids um, as well, right? What was the driving factor to start this? Why, why did your wife decide on this to, to like, what's the, what's the bait, like, what's the foundation, right? Yeah. Well, so, I mean, it it goes back really the the first principle, so to speak, is um, we believe that, or we know that um, learning a a second language, um, learning a new language opens doors in life. Uh, And we want to give every child um, that unique advantage of learning a new language effectively. Now, um, you know, the two key pieces to that is one child. So learning as early as possible um, because your, um, your brain is actively wiring a new language input um, from sort of zero to 10 or 11, 12 years old. Then it starts to become a little bit more difficult. So getting to, to children early with effective um, sort of instruction is really important. Um, and effective is not teaching through sort of rote memorization. Um, or as you pointed out, the traditional methods, which has been, which is essentially broken language learning. Um, yeah. In the United States, for example, only 1% of uh, students that study uh, a second language, a foreign language in uh, middle school and high school go on to become proficient. That's a 99% failure rate. Whoa. So, you know, you're not alone uh, in the amount of students here in the United States, but that's really, it's, it's, it's worldwide too. Um in in Latin America, in Europe, in Asia, uh, where they're teaching English, they still have a similar type of failure rate. Um, and it's because the traditional way of teaching um, a second language, one, happens too late, and two, is done through this sort of rote memorization method, traditional, which I described before, which is this idea that if you learn uh, these silos of vocabulary, uh, if you learn, um, you know, verb and grammar in silos, um, instead of learning it through sort of, you know, comprehensible input and real exposure to the language, then what you're asked to do at some point is, you know, a part of the brain is supposed to stitch this all together, be able to speak and to hear that language. And that's just not how, not how it works. So we teach through a method um, based upon uh, second language acquisition science and the principle that that's sort of it's foundational of this science is called comprehensible input. And essentially what that means is that you want to be exposed to as much input in the target language as possible. So long as that input is made comprehensible in some way. So for example, when you go down into Colombia and you're only exposed to Spanish um, from, you know, all of the Colombians who are trying to communicate with you, talk to you, you know, what they're doing is they're, they're, they're one giving you, you're hearing sort of orally uh, the language, but at the same time, in order to make it comprehensible to you, they're probably acting it out or they're pointing to something or they're saying, you know, um, you know, grab your, you know, your, your cellular to cellular or uh, tu, tu pelo es, es negro, 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 can, Oh, camisa is negro. You know, you're starting to, these are just examples that, that good yeah. teachers use. Yeah. So they're providing the language input as m- much as possible. Um, and they're making it comprehensible. And this is by far the most effective and most efficient way to learn a second language. Um, and that's yeah. essentially what we have productized. Typically that method um, is, is very labor intensive. You know, if, if you were a teacher and you had to be doing, doing this in front of class all the time, every day, you, it, it might be highly effective, but the challenge is that it's very laborious and you run out of things in the class to point to and you're going home and you're pulling things from your house or you're scouring the internet to bring it in, all to provide these opportunities for comprehensible input. And what we've done, Fabulingua, is that we have made interactive stories a vehicle for comprehensible input. So, and we've applied technology so that we can scale it up. So that's why, you know, really teachers have found our product and got extraordinarily excited about it. So we're helping teachers first and foremost, who will then in turn help children. Um, 
Yeah, that's that's the, wow. that's how it's going, and that's how it's happening. We've got a patent on this particular method, and essentially, the way we make interactive stories, children's stories, comprehensible, um, is we weave in sort of a simultaneous oral uh, translation to the text, which is in the target language. So, you know, you'll see a, a screen where, you know, there'll be a shark on the screen uh, in the water on the ocean and the dog's on the beach playing around and, and yeah. a, you know, el perro se fue. And then you'll hear orally, the dog went a la playa to the beach. He se encontró and he met un tiburón, a shark. So what, <laughs> by, by seeing it, by, by, by seeing that the target language, um, uh, you know, you're supercharging this comprehensible input with literacy and you're weaving in this sort of, we call it a magical translation, which is, gives you generally the gist of what's going on in the story. And that helps kids connect um, with uh, the target language of their own language and learn more effectively. So that's, that's yeah. the method in the one. Yeah. I, yeah. I love, I love what you're doing. I love the <clears throat> concept of stories, right? Storytelling, like learning through storytelling and sort of gamification, right? I think that's a really important thing for kids, even adults. So I wanted to ask you, I know, I know a lot of what you're doing is towards children. Is there a future state for Fabulingua for adults? Cause people like me want to be able to learn Spanish in a easy, fun yeah. way as well, you know, so that, you know, we're, so that I could speak Spanish fluently when I go to Mexico or wherever. Is that yeah, something yeah, on the no, radar? I'm, sure. Well, I, I, I can say that, you know, we're squarely focused on the children's market. That being said, um, we get anecdotally a lot of, uh, you know, emails or uh, DMs, et cetera, from parents who say, I'm learning along with my kids. It's great. Nice. You know, they used to just take the iPad or my phone and be practicing, you know, at the kitchen table or living room and I could overhear them practicing their pronunciation. It's part of our, our method as the, the child sort of copycat the narrator, um, a sort of, you know, a, a, uh, a authentic sort of pronunciation of let's say Spanish or English or whatever language they may be studying. Um, and then they copycat that. So um, oftentimes we'll hear from parents who say, you know, I, I was intrigued, I went in and, and I've been learning with my, with my child, my children, which is really cool. Um, you know, there are, Adults tend to, to learn in a different way and choose to learn in a different way. Um, adults uh, feel like sort of lesson-based learning, um, similar to what you might get from Duolingo, where you have things like streaks and like, yes, I did my, you know, 10 minutes today, um, yeah. where essentially you are gamifying lessons. And what Fabulingua is, is actually it's a, it's a mobile game itself. So these stories that I mentioned before, um, they are part of a learning path. And really from a, from a player's perspective, it's a journey. So you go, you in, in the world of Fabulingua, you, you take on your sort of avatar, your character, and you travel from location to location to location, sequentially all over Fabulingua, where you encounter these different stories from different characters. And by reading those stories and going through those stories and doing them the different ways I mentioned and doing some mini games, which test assessment and, and also or provide assessment and also sort of reinforce what you've learned, you're earning keys, which open chests, which, you know, have all sorts of different um, interesting rewards yeah. inside. It makes it fun yeah. too. Yeah. It, totally, it's a, it feels more like, um, you know, Pokemon for language learning. Oh, which you would not, wouldn't really describe sort of lingo as, which is why it's ideally suited for. Yeah, that people. that was one of my questions. How do you differentiate from Duolingo? So I think you summed it up really nicely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so as far as tell me more about, <clears throat> like, what is the bigger mission? Right? Is it? So I'm I'm reading the mission on the website here. It says we want to make learning a new a new language more fun and accessible for children, so that future generations grow up to be more open-minded. And I, I love what you said earlier about learning a new language opens up more opportunities. And I hundred, yeah. 110% agree with that because, yeah. you know, Spanish being basically the second language of the United States, you know, you, I think it's important to have that skill, you know, especially yeah. live, especially in Texas, right? Like Texas is, you know, a Mecca of, um, you know, Spanish speakers as well. So what I'm curious about is, is there sort of like, um, a, a overarching maybe global view of 
the of the software to not only the not only support the US, but to and it says increasingly globalized world. But I'm curious, like what are your thoughts on helping eight billion children, right? Like something yeah. on, on that scale. Yeah. Like is is that kind of part of the vision and the mission? Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, we've started our first product, our prototype, and really where we've learned the most by engaging with um, kids, with uh, parents, with teachers, uh, has been teaching Spanish to English speakers. That's also sort of our learned, lived experience, you know, your founder experience. And so you can provide the most sort of subtle insight to product development around that. But from from day one, when we decided to to build this company, um, really, we saw the the biggest opportunity and the ability to have the largest impact in teaching English um, to um, uh, to English language learners. And that's mm-hmm. not only obviously a, a big opportunity issue and challenge here in the United States um, as we get more and more sort of immigrant population come in and, and they these these kids who, uh, we want to assimilate into our school system. We want them to learn. We want them to create opportunity. We don't want there to be sort of gaps in opportunity for them. And oftentimes language is <clears throat> the sort of first hurdle that you need to uh, overcome in order for them to uh, begin to sort of achieve um, and to progress. And so in the United States alone, we have around 5 million kids that um, under, uh, you know, third grade and under that still are learning English as a second language. So to help those kids and to help the teachers of those students help those kids is sort of probably our our next, um, call it milestone, when we put out a uh, product teaching English um, as a second language, which we'll do next year. Um, Beyond that, that really sort of sets us up to uh, expand um, into other English language learning markets. Certainly, uh, Latin America teaching English to to Spanish speakers is a it's a huge market there. There's you know 70 million children um, in uh, pre K through elementary school that uh, should be learning a second language. You know, in Latin America, if you sort of group it into uh, one big Latam. Um, in Asia, uh, in you know, from China to Japan, Indonesia, India, um, there's just a, a voracious appetite uh, for English language learning, and it's all going digital. So the market is is exploding in growth. Um, most of what you would have ever heard about with regards to around language learning is all focused on the adult population. So yeah. um, we are positioned with getting to children um, early. We believe we can have the biggest impact, and we believe you know, is a a huge sort of untapped opportunity. It's been underserved, overlooked, and it's fragmented. So we can really come in um, by taking essentially what we've we've built now and reskinning it, repurposing it into other markets. That's the goal. Absolutely. We we see that the the lion's share of of our growth uh, is going to be in in teaching uh, English to non-native English speakers. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. So, <clears throat> when I think about the the software, at what stage do you suggest? So, I have a couple, I have so many questions. But first thing is, if I'm a teacher um, or a parent, sounds like your target audience is tar- is parents and teachers, right? You're inserting and helping support and get get through their yeah. I, I, initially, yeah, no. Initially, look, we we've built a uh, a teacher dashboard um, that mm-hmm. seamlessly pairs with the app. So what we're giving is it's a it's a free product too. It's a freemium sort of model. So yeah. teachers will can sign up on the web, sort of self-serve. They can create an account, they can roster their their students all for free, and they can essentially set up, you know, Fabulingua in the classroom um, on either the tablets or Chromebooks or whatever they may be using. Um, they can even create profiles for each one of these kids. So when they walk in class, they've got their profile. And then that teacher can use Fabulingua in class for instruction. We have resources for teachers, we have guides, we have printouts, we have all sorts of things that they can use. Um, to what are the, oh, sorry to learning. I was thinking, what are, what's the age group that yeah. you suggest somebody start? Is it second grade, first grade? Can it, like, is it preschool, right? Like what, at what point makes sense for, for the teachers and for students to, or for the parents to sort of engage with your platform? Well, we, we, you, so we, we, we think as early as possible. So exposure as early as possible, so long as you're comfortable sort of with the screen time associated with it. Like 
Um, but this is productive screen time. So we we put we list out sort of two to ten, but we've had parents who are sitting with their kids at age one or two or three. Now, obviously, when they're younger, you're going to be um, you're going to be supporting them, and you're going to be there with them for the most part. By the time they get to be four, five, six, um, most of these uh, kids uh, are so intuitive um, with the the tablets and the technology that they're able to sort of perform and enjoy the app by themselves. And so, you know, as you get older, eight, nine, 10, 11, they get a little bit more into the gameplay and the game design, and they'll try to sort of, you know, collect certain cards so they can use them in a card battle, or they'll get to collect certain points or keys so that they can dress their avatar in a certain way. But it literally from the age of sort of four, five, six, it's independent personalized learning that can be done at home. Now, the way that we're getting it um, to these kids for the most part is going to be through supporting these teachers. We can help these teachers who have very few tools um, and uh, really little technology um, to engage and support this particular age group, then we will then sort of be able to sort of pass that through to um, to the kids and then back to the families at home. So. Yeah. What are, yeah. What are what are some of the um, some of the feedback that you're getting from teachers and student or uh, from parents, like yeah. how it's enabling them in the classroom? Because what I could imagine is from a, a teacher's perspective, it's a, it's a tool that helps support you know the the growth of their students, right? And of mm -hmm. course, every every teacher wants that, right? Like they want to see their students thrive. They want to see their students learn. Um, I would assume it's primarily for Spanish teachers or or tell me a little bit about like the demographic of those teachers as well. Yeah, well, right right now, the product is teaching Spanish to English speakers. So next year, we'll have essentially the same product teaching English to Spanish for the ESL uh, uh, schools, teachers, dual language immersion as well. Um, the feedback, well, it's interesting. So, you know, we, we decided to we had a lot of teachers reach out to us when, when Fabulink was first in sort of call it a prototype phase, we put it on the app stores and it was originally designed for, 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 for parents, for families. And so we were kind of reaching out to them, getting their feedback, learning about how the kids were using it, engaging. Um, and over um, the course of that period of time, we learned a few things. We learned one, Parents love story-based learning, kind of like you mentioned before, right? Two, kids yeah. really leaned into game design. Like when there was some game um, elements to it, they loved that piece as well. And then three, the most important probably point in the light bulb moment was teachers found us. Um, parents had told teachers, then teachers told other teachers. We started getting an influx of emails saying, uh, I want... 40 accounts for this class. I want 80 accounts for this class. Um, I want 600 for this school. So we started to realize, wow, these teachers are, are really in need of, of this type of content and curriculum. Let's build them uh, a tool to make it easy for them to administer this or use this in class and help them out. Um, we did a big survey of like 2,000 teachers um, and found out that um, like 70% of them are not using technology in class. So they're, they're sort of underserved and overlooked. Wow. Um, we also, you know, uh, found out that, you know, the ones that were using it were using Duolingo and they weren't happy with it because it was really for an older, um, older mm -hmm. age demographic. So we now have a waiting list of 2,000 teachers um, for our dashboard, and we're slowly starting to sort of let out the dashboard and let teachers start to use it, test it, and incorporate it in class. Um, these kids, what happens is the teachers get in, they, they put it in the hands of the kids. The kids are loving it. The teachers are loving the fact that they're engaged and they're learning. And then they tell the parents about it. And then the parents will download it on their home device, you know, be it a tablet or phone, whatever. They'll have a free account. And then the, the kids will be able to, to sort of use FabuLingua at home. But they'll only be able to use sort of the limited teacher version, which is about a story at a time. If the teacher, if the kids want or the families want to have access to all the stories or all the gameplay, then they need to purchase uh, sort of a subscription. That's the business model. Wow, really, really nice. Con I just wanted to congratulate you on this success. Like just the fact that you're doing something that's literally changing children's lives parents lives teachers lives like amazing man so thank you thank you so much for what you're what you've built and what you've created and 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 all that 2000 wait list that's pretty amazing that means that there's major demand 
or, yeah, no, or what you guys are doing. Yeah, yeah. That's look again. I, I'll reiterate what I said at the top, which is that, and you've incorporated it as well into into sort of this discussion, which is, you know, learning a new language opens doors for these kids, and the earlier we can open these doors and open their eyes to these opportunities, the the sooner we'll get them sort of on um, sort of a path of opportunity. And so there is a being able to speak more than one language is a unique advantage in life. And I'm sure you've seen it in your peers, uh, whether your colleagues, your friends, your family, and you just say, gosh, you know, we all want that for our kids. So we're trying to uh, to, to let every child uh, have that unique advantage and opportunity in life. Love it. Love it, Mark. So uh, we're going to wrap up here in a moment. But before we go, I wanted to ask you, um, where can, you know, potential customers reach out to you? What is the best, you know, point of contact for them to get involved in the Fabulingua community? Sure. So if you are a teacher, an educator, an administrator, a homeschooler, we have a lot of homeschoolers. Um, or yeah, we're really ideally suited for homeschoolers. Um, you can go to the fabulingua.com, F-A-B-U-L-I-N-G-U-A.com. Um, go to the teacher tab, sign up. Um, on the, the waiting list and we'll reach out to you and get you uh, the, the dashboard um, as we let it out. If you are a, uh, a family who wants to try Fabulingua, um, we have a seven day free trial or even you can go into the app and you can you know choose a single free story to test it out. You go to um, the app store, uh, Apple app store, you can go to the Google play store and just look up Fabulingua and it's a free download and uh, get logged in, registered and, and try it out. Um, we think that um, we think that you're gonna like it. So, uh, and of course you can always reach out to us through the website as well. Amazing. Mark, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you, Rich.